Welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show on this Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to all of you. Now, if you didn't know, the life-saving South African Championships are back after a hiatus in 2020 due to the pandemic, of course. Now, the epic event is an opportunity to showcase skills to the rest of the world and truly exhibit what it means to be a lifeguard. Our very own Mr. Nature Boy and world champion lifesaver, Raul de Mornay, competed in the competition, which is still ongoing, in Kabecha from the 2nd to the 9th of October. And the man is back with us. We We've missed you, brother. Yo, yo, yo. It was rough, though. It was, it was crazy. It was good to be back. I'm not going to lie. Um, an incredible competition out in uh, Kings Beach in Abeja as well. Um, after somewhat, I think it was two years since the last time I had a chance to compete, and I think for many lifeguards, an incredible opportunity just to showcase their skills and go up against the, literally the best in the country. Oh, what an opportunity, eh? We are, we are so proud of you. Let's start off there. Proud of what you've achieved just in this space. We'll speak about your achievements now, <laughs> but also two years after competing, you had an injury. A lot mm. of people don't know about that. How was it getting back into the swing of things again, competing with the best of the best in Kabeha? Yeah, look, I, I've said it to a few people before, but uh, the way I injured myself two years ago was at a Tri-Nations competition and an American athlete actually uh, uh, landed on me, dislocated my shoulder, torn ACL, labrum tear, nerve damage, uh, shoulder was completely out of socket, a New Zealand physio had to pop it back in. I, I called it on my athletic career completely. I mean, it was at the age of 30, 31 at the time. Uh, that was me. I, uh, doctors were saying operations, otherwise, you know, try to look at another sport. But literally, the, the, the message behind it was for me that I didn't want to give up on that. I didn't want to let go of the potential that I felt I had inside of me, and I didn't really want to listen to everyone that was just pushing for surgery. So I worked my butt off, honestly, every single day, especially during COVID. I had an incredible opportunity to just realign, rebuild, find new techniques and ways to restructure my body, and got myself back to a position where I was like, I think I can compete. I think, hey, the age thing is just a number, actually. Uh, there's more to this. I mean, with the way we fuel ourselves these days and the opportunities we, we have in, in superfoods and in advancements for, for so much in terms of fueling ourselves, it's such an incredible opportunity to put that to the test in an event like this. And just to be able to compete, to have my health in this day and age, absolutely grateful. But then to go and achieve something like that, Oh, uh, yeah. You are still on a high. I can clearly see you still on a high. Yeah. You just flew back last night, and here you are serving Mzanzi with the magic. Yeah. I actually got a first-hand experience into seeing how you just prep mentally for, for this. Because it's not just about the physical. It's not just about no. training every day and fueling your body with the correct foods. But it's also about putting your mind in that space. I remember when we were in Durban, while I was living my best life, you were literally sitting there watching people, different athletes, as they get into a mental space. Speak, speak to us about how you got into that space to prepare you for world champs again. Look, it's a definite juggle, especially when you're not a full-time athlete in this country. And that's uh, something I'll commemorate to any South African athlete that's not doing it full-time. It is so hard. You're not getting the support that you want. You've got to juggle a job. There's so much going on. I mean, me being in this media space, it's another world altogether. So there really comes this meticulous management that's so important. But above all else, it really is that mental aspect. I can definitely say my body was not 100%. I'm still on that road to recovery. But the experience and the mental aptitude to first Firstly, believe in yourself and then go out there and want to show everybody else what that belief actually means to you. I think that's what's really important. And the mindset is it's ultra focused. It's conditioning on another level to be able to compete in the conditions we did from early in the morning over a few days, running up to your finals back to back against hundreds of competitors. It's one of the most physically demanding things I can actually honestly think of. Um, the, the multiple facets that it's testing in the body is so incredible. And I mean, not just to myself, but kudos to every single athlete that did this weekend and is still competing competing throughout this week because oh, what an incredible thing to do yeah. and uh, an awesome opportunity to be back at the stage again yeah sure. and you know what I often forget that you are actually hailed the king of the sand the <laughs> fastest man on sand South Africa and you took first place you got gold you got silver I mean back in it already how does it feel to be able to walk away <sighs> with, with those medals it's honestly unbelievable I mean this year I went up against some of the fastest guys I ever have competed against in all my 20 years of doing sport uh, it's a title that I put behind me because I thought that was in my heyday the fastest man on sand but being able to come back and reclaim that title absolutely incredible 
possible, to be the fastest man in the country, and also at the same time, I must be honest, and I'm sharing that title with uh, a, a brother, a friend, someone I've coached, I train with, and, and he also in another event in Flags, which is another big one of mine, was able to win that against me. We had the one-two and we kind of shared the podium, myself and Siobhan John Clark. It was an incredible experience for him as well, coming back from an injury. Uh, he, he literally broke his back. <laughs> he literally broke his back, uh, the, the, the vertebra collapsed, and for both of us it was about showing people that age literally is not a number. Your belief is so much more important and you literally just got to do consistent daily hard work and that will materialize into making dreams come true. And you share, this, you share this stage with three, uh, two of your best friends, obviously Tari coming in third place, Shivan uh, second yeah. place and then you first. What is it like to be able to share that, not with only Mzanzi, with the world, but also with people that you've trained with, people <sighs> that you look up to and people that you are literally friends with? Incredible. I mean, having a support system like that is just phenomenal. One thing I must say is that we broke a record this weekend. It's the first time it's ever been done in South African history in the sport to get a one, two, three and to share it with your family and your friends. It's, it's phenomenal. No one's going to really understand the sacrifice and the work we put into it. But I can't thank those, those boys uh, harder than I can right now, especially on live TV. So a blessing. Grateful. I'm hoping to just do more and uh, age is just a number, Mzanzi. Don't stop working out. Whatever your goal is, I believe in you and you need to believe in yourself because anything is possible. One more time, can we give a big round of applause? <laughs> Mr. Nature Boy himself, Thank the you, fastest man <laughs> on sand. Literally, is not just a pretty face and if you wanted to get this chiseled body, then we are heading to the kitchen to eat some spinach. <laughs>